Hey, fellow traveler, welcome to the Third Eye Awakening podcast, a show where we talk all about spiritual and psychic awakening, magic, the shift from 3D to 5D, star seeds, ascension, multiple timelines, multiple dimensions, the universe, the multiverse, the Akashic records, all the good things. I am your host, Amy Belair, and I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Okay, let's do this. Hello, beautiful soul family. Welcome to a solo episode of Third Eye Awakening. Be forewarned. This is going to be a long one, I think. I have so much to share with all of you. Holy moly. I more or less took the week off this week in preparation for next week where I'll be doing a chakra clearing daily as part of the magic in the dark slash warrior of light bundle and so I was just like oh I need a week to just chill my nervous system out and be in my life and clear out my channel and holy moly did a lot of information come through okay so without any Further unnecessary preamble, here we go. So, I want to talk to you all about the preliminary energies that I'm feeling for the next two years. (sighs) Okay. It feels like the next two years are going to be hard they're going to be hard years and same with my last solo podcast episode this time I'm really going to try to just be bolder and not make you all listen to my internal anxious agonizing over you know spreading hard news (laughs) but it is really hard for me to share these things far and wide you know within my tiny 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 corner of the internet of people who listen to me because I don't want to instill fear in people, but I also feel like I would be a bad person if I did not share these things that I am seeing, sensing, and understanding. So in 2023 and 2024, but mostly starting in 2023, I am feeling a collective dark night of the soul at a whole new level. This may or may not actually apply to those of us who have already been through a couple dark nights of the soul of awakening. I think it will probably be mostly experienced by the unawakened masses or the ones who are starting to awaken but have not really, really, really like gone all the way down the rabbit hole. So I am sensing a massive awakening, like another wave, like so many people waking up. And it's going to come through. What it feels like is the occurrence of events that make it almost impossible to stay in a state of cognitive dissonance and deny the seriousness of what is going on in this realm and also to kind of bring up out of of these scary places a little bit, something I understood yesterday is that, you know, the reason this is all going down at this time is because you know, and I'm not the only one to say it. I just feel it through my own knower. We're in, we are in an ascension and awakening cycle. So it is inevitable. And what it looked like to me was almost like a labyrinth that is round. It's circular and it's made up of many layers, many concentric shells, like kind of like Russian nesting dolls, but you know, it's all, it's all circular, but the labyrinth is created like a labyrinth where there are, you're in the outer shell and you're attempting to get to the center 
And there are these like, you know, gateways or passageways into the next shell and the next shell and the next shell towards the center, but none of them are lined up. And so that what's, that's what makes the labyrinth confusing to navigate and how so many people sort of get trapped in these dead ends or so many consciousness fragments or souls or whatever get, get trapped in these dead ends within the labyrinth. They can't get from, you know, the, the outer shell into the next one, never mind all the way into the middle. But what is happening right now is there's like a giant, almost like hand, like turning the dials of this Rubrics cube like labyrinth. It's not a cu it's not a cube. It's a circle, but it's kind of it's, it reminds me of somebody playing with a Rubrics cube, turning the pieces, and they're turning it so that all of those little gateways to the next shell all line up and lead to the center, which is the ascension and the return to unity consciousness. P.S. without having to drop your human form, without having to die to be reunited with God source. And P.P.S. <laughs> dying does not automatically mean that you're reunited with God source. So as I'm talking about like these massive awakenings and these things happening that m make it pretty much impossible to remain in cognitive dissonance from the human perspective it's extremely uncomfortable and painful and yet from the higher cyclical vantage point this is affecting all dimensions like those different layers of this round labyrinth i'm talking about are the concentric shells of the dimensions the closer to the center of the labyrinth the higher the dimension so, okay, so trying to stay on track. So I sense this dark night of the soul at a whole new level for the collective at large, which results in a massive wave of awakening. And it's going to feel like very jerky and very chaotic and very destructive in, in terms of, you know, the the societal structures that we have used to navigate this plane of reality through. Like an airplane nosediving to crash land. It's like through the turbulence of this, this nosedive, huge pieces of the craft are being broken off. Like wings, big chunks of the exterior panel, engines falling off, things like that. And ultimately, what I feel like is going to happen, particularly through this eclipse season that we are entering, and this has been, I've, I've formulated this in conversation with Christina Luna. She is my, she's one of my mentors and she is a powerful astrologer. And I was just like, Christina, I feel dark shit coming. Like, can we talk about it? <laughs> so she helped me to understand that through this eclipse season and probably beyond, a lot of our creature comforts are going to be taken away. Particularly the addictive and numbing agents that we have been using to remain in a state of cognitive dissonance, but also just a state of victim mentality and disempowerment. So, for example, you can be awake and you can, like, fucking hate your job and just be like, you know, grumble, grumble, bitch, bitch, bitch. There's no, I have to do this. There's no way. And kind of like shut off from receiving any guidance towards any other opportunities or pathways to receive support for your life force and your existence. Because you're just singing this like same old story that you were indoctrinated with about the, the, the things we have to do to survive. That is a state of disempowerment and victim mentality that just basically is a denial of our incredibly potent creatorship so 
I'm feeling like a lot of our creature comforts are going to be taken away and a lot of the things that we have built up false identity constructs around. Like we think we are this person and we're not. We are not. We are so much more. There are so many people just functioning on autopilot with the default programming they've received through their childhood and their youth and their early adulthood. And they just tell themselves that this is who they are and this is just the way life is. And it's fucking not. It is not. You are a thousand billion times more than that default programming and the autopilot that you're functioning under. It, it's anyway. Okay. <laughs> So I feel these creature comforts being taken away. And for a lot of people, this is going to result in a massive awakening. People who have been resisting the awakening. You know, I feel like there are a lot of people who are teetering on it, but they're just like, oh, it's scary. They're scared of the implications of facing these really uncomfortable truths about how the hologram within this realm has been programmed to manifest. Like, you know, they're, they're afraid to acknowledge. You know, like we all know those people, especially these days who are, they're kind of like, they're questioning the motives behind Bill Gates. And these injections and you know they're still kind of they're cycling everything through the covid narrative still and they're starting to question it and so they are teetering on being awakened but they're also just like still going through the same motions that they have for years and they're questioning that one thing, but they know that to truly question it means that they have to question all the things. And that's what they're afraid of. And that's what they are resisting. They do not want to know about the, you know, horrible pedophilia rings. And they do not want to know about all of the false flag events. And, you know, they're, they can only allow in so much of that uncomfortable truth. Well, I feel like a lot of these people are going to really have their the things that they have been clinging to in order to avoid it removed in some fashion or another and and so they're gonna just be like ah, like oh my god and they're going to awaken and it's going to be, it's so timely. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. And there's no way around it. And we all know it. All of us, like, I have so many, you know, beautiful truthers in my community. And so probably most of you listening to this are like, it is time. And we're going to be ready and excited to welcome those people into the fold. And we're also going to forgive them for any judgmental comments that they made while they were under the mind control hypnosis of extremely well-executed mass propaganda-based programming. We're going to let all that be water under the bridge and we're just going to be like, oh God, thank you. I'm so glad you're awake. Thank you for being here now. I receive you. I love you. This is hard. It's painful. I got you. We're going to step into leadership and mentorship roles and really receive these people because we love them. But ultimately, I feel like the way it's going to be experienced is as a big fracturing of that ego identity. Like I said, all the people who even, you know, are awake in a truther capacity, but they still are functioning with this incredibly limited perception of who they actually are. Like the profound multi-dimensional consciousness that they actually are. A, a lot of that is going to get fractured and fragmented. And I am also humbling myself and preparing myself for another layer of my own ego identity fracturing. I'm already kind of starting to experience it. 
And all we can do is just surrender to it and let it happen. Like it, it, this is not working against us. This is for us. It is for us, for us. We do not want those addictions. We do not want those numbing agents. We do not want these, you know, these like rhythms and routines and patterns and structures that keep us feeling safe because they're predictable, but they are like not a reflection of what we're actually capable of creating and having and that ultimately keep us small and complacent. We do not want those things in our lives. And it might be very painful to have them taken away. And if you can cooperate with it and surrender to it and just let it happen and and basically like trust fall and know that you are so much bigger than what you perceive and so much more powerful and provisioned for it will go much easier. It doesn't have to hurt. For example, the the fracturing of the ego identity that I'm starting to experience, and I believe it's in the preliminary phase, is not painful for me right now. It's uncomfortable, but it's not painful because I, I've been through it before, so I know what it is. And I know that if I cooperate with it, I move with it. I don't try to you know, exhaust myself swimming against the current or paddling against the current. And I just let myself dissolve and transform into something greater and bigger and more expansive and ascended and closer to the truth and my God source essence. Then like everything, everything will be, I don't know. It's like, it's, it, it's the definition of sublime. It's it's beautiful and sorrowful and ecstatic and painful all at the same time, but it ultimately leads to the moreness, the moreness of who I am. And it's the same for you. What this is leading to is the moreness of who you are. So some will be able to emerge into the capital T truth of all that they are and all that we are collectively and what is happening here and what we are being summoned to, to take part in on an awakened, lucid level. And others will not. Some others will crumble under this fracturing of ego identity. They just are not in a place where they are going to understand what is happening and be able to navigate it. And it is going to be hard for us to watch. I don't think that it's only going to result in, in deaths. I think that it will result in seeing people essentially like have you know, psychological breakdowns because they, they are, they are unprepared. And that's going to be really hard to hold that and hold them in a space of compassion and love. But that is what we are, that's what we're required to do. And I also feel a big influx of dark entities, which I talked about in the last solo episode. And I have more to talk and more to say on that now shortly. But I feel I feel the dark beings, the ones who are here for descension, not ascension. They are here to pull us farther away from source and deeper into their constructs rather than being, you know, harmonized with the ascension process of returning to source consciousness. I feel that those dark beings are are going to be standing there offering like opium poppies to lull those who can't take it, who truly fracture back to sleep into a deeper sleep. It kind of reminds me of the scene from the Wizard of Oz where the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, she's not present. She just sees this field of poppies that they're traveling through and she uses the field of poppies 
to put them to sleep. It's like this is happening on an astral level. It is mostly not happening on a 3D level, but it will play out in the 3D. So an example of how I anticipate that it will play out is the metaverse and people being, you know, so for example, let's just say, let's just walk it through the narrative of the fourth industrial revolution. Not saying this is how it's going to go, just for the sake of explaining it. It's kind of like, let's say that they succeed in taking away everything that we own. And they're all like, you know, Klaus Schwab, and he's all like, you will own nothing and be happy, whatever. Uh, I'm not doing the German accent. But let's say that's what they do. And those of us who were already awake were like, oh, God, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. But we see what they're doing. We see that they are trying to herd humans, you know, toward the slaughter, basically. not Like the proverbial slaughter. I'm not saying the literal physical slaughter. They're herding us in a, in a direction away from source into all the agendas that we see, the transhumanist agenda, the no gender agenda, not even just transgender, the no gender agenda, which means no creation. It means no reproduction. Like think about the grays, what we know about the grays, not the, you know, beautiful, tall, white, elevated, high dimensional zetas, the grays. Why are they so obsessed with our genetics? Because they cannot reproduce. Were they created to not reproduce? No, they evolved in that direction by choice. That is, you know, those are one of the agendas that they're moving us towards. Anyway, so for all of us who are awakened and those who, you know, who are newly awakening but able to, like, keep their eyes open and see it despite the horror of it, for them it's going to feel like a fresh new hell that is, you know, almost excruciating and we are going to have to support them with so much strength and love like I said and like forgive every stupid thing that they said while they were still asleep and be like remember that we were once asleep too and that <laughs> divide and conquer is the name of the game we're just going to hold them and love them and help them get through this for us, it's going to feel like, okay, this is getting dark. This is getting scary, but I am awake. I see what's happening and I choose the light of God's source creator. I choose the, the, the God flame, the spark within my heart. And for those who cannot, like they just cannot handle it and they have psychological breaks, and they're, they're just like, oh, God, it's so awful. I can't, I can't, I can't. Anything, put me to sleep. Anything, anything, anything. And then, you know, the powers that be are like, and here is the metaverse. And they're like, give me the headset. And they just, you know, are basically in like a prison cell. And they're just, they, they like, they're so disconnected from this plane of reality and they're entering into an astral virtual reality where they can completely disengage from this one because they can't handle it. So that is the summary of the preliminary energies that I feel for the next two years. I do feel like it's going to be most intense in 2023. And then in 2024, it's going to carry on, but most of us will stabilize in that. And we will, like, we all were, we, guys, we fucking came for this exact time, for this exact reason. We, we have what we need within us to, to be present and be an ambassador for the true light. And in 2024, I feel like we're we're really going to stabilize into that. So it's it's not going to feel as hard for us, but there's still going to be a lot of collective difficulty. And then I feel like on the other side of that in 2025, we're going to... Oh, that's what it's going to feel like. Oh, like, okay, there is, there's a... It's better. I don't know how else to put it. Anyway. 
I will do a 2023 year ahead tarot and Akashic reading about this for the whole public, you know, in due time. Anyway, the thing is that things are getting real, real, like real, real now. There is no more time to fuck around in our disempowerment and victim stories. Hear me, my friends. Hear me. We must accept ourselves as powerful creators and begin to take full responsibility in order to get through this next phase and to thrive, not just to get through it like white knuckling through it, but to thrive because we will thrive as powerful creators. We will thrive. They are not more powerful than us. They are not creators. They harness our creative power and use it because they are not powerful creators. So we have to harness that creatorship. And the, the price of that creatorship, like the, you know, that whole saying of like, with great power comes great responsibility. This is very true. The, the, not the price, it's not really the right word. Like the fee, I don't know. It's, it's the thing that we all have to make a payment in exchange for this level of power. And the payment, the tribute, whatever it is, is, is the willingness to take full responsibility. So what does that mean? Does that mean that if you were absolutely treated like garbage in your childhood, that you have to take responsibility for that as though you somehow chose it and created it for yourself? No, that is a hijackery. That is a deception. What it means is that you are no longer running away from it. You are no longer living your life defined by that experience. And I know that's a tall order. I know. I, again, like I, I must acknowledge for the sake of integrity that I was blessed with a safe childhood. And so I cannot speak from that. And I work with people who were not blessed with that same thing. But I have been through trauma, and so I know how much work it takes. I don't want to say how long it takes, because these days, I don't know about all of you, but I honestly feel like every second is actually only 44 milliseconds or whatever. Like, literally, the units of time are compressing. They are so much shorter. Things are going so, so fast. And people are awakening at incredible rates. You know, my awakening was so long and drawn out. Oh, God. So many people in my world are awakening like two days ago and they're up to speed. Like, it, it, this doesn't have to be hard in terms of length of time. It's just, I just want to acknowledge that taking full responsibility for the things that we've experienced, that we've inherited, that others have done to us all of the deception and the programming and everything that has polluted our reality streams, polluted our perception and what we are creating. It doesn't have to take long, but it is, it's a, it is, it is a tall order, especially if you have not taken full responsibility for it before. So again, full responsibility doesn't mean you somehow created it. And so you just deserve it. Or like, Screw that whole karma concept that, you know, you did something bad, so you you deserve it. It's It doesn't really work like that. That's a gross oversimplification for the purposes of deception and hijackery. It's just that you're no longer putting any of your energy, any of your energy into resisting what happened. And that means that you are not making choices from a place of unintegrated, unhealed trauma. You are not making choices from unintegrated, unalchemized shadow. You are not making choices from a place of trying to avoid getting hurt. You are not squeezing yourself into like a little probability track 
that is defined by the shitty things that happen to you. Instead, you expand into a place where you're like, oh, fuck, I can transmute all this trauma. I can alchemize all this shadow. I can fully integrate all of the fragments of my own consciousness. And I can also do this on behalf of others. And I can create from a place of true like self-sovereignty and personal responsibility as, as a powerful God source connected being. And when we do that, we create, we create our own individual hologram, our own reality streams, because every person who is born is not just a person, it's an entire reality. Wrap your mind around that. A person is not just a person. A person is a reality that did not previously exist. Oh, it, not just one timeline, infinite branching timelines that did not previously exist. And, you know, we wonder why. I remember that this was a big question in when I was a midwife. Why so many, you know, stable, healthy, educated, up middle upper class couples were dealing with infertility while lower class, uneducated, traumatized women mostly, but men too, but like, you know, I saw them as women because they were often single. Why they were just getting pregnant left, right, and center, even when they were actively practicing contraception. Like the number of pregnancies I saw, especially in that demographic with IUDs in place, it, it boggles the mind. And it wasn't until I understood that every person is a reality stream. Every new life is a reality stream that I was like, oh my God, that is why they are targeting the, you know, upper class populations, the ones that by all our ridiculous, stupid, heteronormative standards, check all the boxes for being good, good parents and good, you know, providers, home providers, whatever for, for children. I mean, I like, I don't even play into all that shit, but, but to continue illustrating my point, and then the people who are, you know, just deeply traumatized and came from very difficult child circumstances and a lot of addiction issues and poverty and like a lot of things that we would, then we would be like, oh, well, you know, they maybe shouldn't have like three, four, five, six, seven plus children. When I understood that every new life is an entire reality, I was like, oh, fuck, that's why. That is why. So you are an entire reality stream with infinite branching timeline possibilities and certain branching timeline probabilities that were birthed when you were born. They were birthed when you were conceived, but they were really like solidified into material existence when you were born. And so you can create your reality stream. You are a steward of this reality stream, your own holographic reality. When you accept yourself as a powerful creator and you take full responsibility for that, you will thrive. Each time the urgency and intensity of these ascension waves ramp up, the stakes get higher. So it's like the awakening waves are more, I don't know what I want, because I'm like, whoa, my awakening was so hard. But it was also gradual. Like it took a long time. It was very hard. You couldn't pay me any amount of money to go back and redo my 20s without this perspective that I have now, like just literally go back and redo it again. Nope, mm -mm, not happening. So it was very hard. But it's like the, the, the acuteness, the intensity in the moment. Yeah, the, the like ring of fire burning intensity of each new ascension wave is like the stakes ramp up because 
the things that we elected to ignore, it hurts when they get taken away. And there are, how do I want to put it? There's like, there's ramifications for electing to ignore things. And I don't say that in a punitive way. It's just an observation. I am not the decider. I'm not presenting myself as the decider of like who is ignoring and who isn't. I'm just saying. So anyway, my point is make your choice. Okay. I have a little PSA to share. I'm going to make it brief. But if you want to hear the the extended explanation, it's on Patreon. So go check it out. I just got a really intense transmission last night, a very, very, yeah, very urgent revelation about Halloween slash Samhain of 2022. So coming up in a matter of days. What I realized is that it is harvest time. So for the love of God's source, all creation, and all things sacred, please do not participate on any level in dark worship this Halloween. I am fucking serious. What I understood last night is that the cultural ritual of Halloween that has been practiced for, I don't really know how long. I didn't, I said this on Patreon too. I didn't, I haven't researched. Like I just got this information last night, hot off the press. I have not researched, you know, the history of Halloween. But I know that I'm 40 and Halloween was a thing you know, before I was born. So this cultural ritual of Halloween that has been practiced in a, an attitude, a spirit of fun and like mostly innocence by most people. It's just like, it's just, it's a good time. And it's kind of like a, a one, like a seasonal honoring of the thinning of the veils and, you know, like really, it, I'm sure it has its roots in reconnecting with our deceased loved ones, whatever. You know, like there, there is a lot in us around the spirit of lightness and fun and good intentions. And what I understood last night is that, holy shit, that is... That is contrived. It is, it is contrived. It's a, a trap that has been laid for us and cultivated over many, many years, over 40 years, obviously. Again, I don't know when it, when it really started, but like the, the ritual of trick-or-treating and filling our children with candy and filling ourselves with candy and, you know, the way that... Comp- completely hijacks our our physical vessel the like displaying of dark effigies of like skeletons and ghouls and jack-o'-lanterns and goblins and demons and like all those things that they have been done in fun and lightness and p.s i'm gonna say like nothing in anything i'm saying is coming from religious superstition or or like a religious it's not coming from that place it this is just i understood it last night and in on the patreon i explain like kind of the process of what i've been feeling around halloween for a couple weeks and you know i have a four-year-old and she's very excited for halloween and i talk about kind of right now what my plans are how i'm probably going to handle that and I warn about like what not to do in terms of like freaking out and taking people's Halloween away but what I understand is that this trap of this cultural ritual has been prepared for us where we have been without any consequence to us 
we have been participating annually in this practice of, like I said, trick-or-treating, gorging on sugar, and displaying effigies of basically like anti-life dark, like the, the dark realm, the demonic realm, all of that, like watching horror movies, dressing up as, you know, dark things, and even dressing up as anything. It, it, I wish I could articulate it properly. It's so, sometimes I feel kind of burdened. I'm like, fuck, I see things so clearly. I understand so much. And it's on this like subtle granular level. And that's why my transmissions take so long. I'm so long-winded because I, I can feel the subtleties and the nuances and the folds of it. But those are the places where we get stuck. All of it, all of it, decorating our houses, the outside of our houses, decorating our doors and our windows, our porches, decorating the inside of our houses with these, you know, representations of the dark realm, all of it we've been allowed to do and we've cultivated childhood sentimental connections with it. Like a lot of people I know, they love Halloween. They love it. They love it. They love it. They love it. And we have to ask ourselves like, why do I love it? Why? Where did it start? I'm just, just ask yourself, where did it start? Your love for Halloween. Where did it start? Why do you love it? What, what about it do you love? <sighs> it's a trap that has been laid for us. And it was laid for this time now. What I feel is that this time now, the veil is so thin. It's so thin this year. It's barely existent. And it is harvest time. What I saw is that around the 29th, 30th, and 31st of October, many portals will be opening to those darker astral realms where demonic and parasitic consciousness exist and that they're not going to be taking us through those portals. They are entering this realm through those portals. In order to enact any influence over this realm, they need us. They don't have bodies. So they need our bodies as vehicles and translators of the arrangement of consciousness in this realm so they are going to be entering through portals and everybody that has that is unconsciously unknowingly participating in the rituals of halloween are in effect giving their consent even though it is based on a deception they don't they don't function with integrity it doesn't matter everybody who participates in the rituals of halloween from a place of unconsciousness will be giving it's like an invitation it's almost like opening your door to these dark energies that are entering our realm and saying come on in i've prepared my space for you Oh, look, I'm dressed up as something other than what I am. I am abdicating my vehicle. I am, I am engaging in an unconscious identity shifting. I have prepared my porch. I have prepared my threshold. I have hung your likeness on my doors and my windows. Come on in. There is a place for you here. Now I know. That's not what most people are, are intending to do. But like I said, the dark consciousness field play by rules of integrity is the antithesis of that. So please, please, please do not. Oh my God, just please understand what you are inviting in. Just have awareness. Just have awareness. Heed my words, please. 
understand that you are communicating. We are communicating at all times with multidimensional realms. And some of them are, are deceptive and dark and seek to thwart ascension and pull us farther away from source and fracture and fragment us further. And some of them are of the, the God source creator oneness light and seek to bring us into the fullness of all that we are. And like I said, again, find the extended explanation over on Patreon. Please come check it out. I offer like you know, what, what to do about this, basically. And I also want to say, I said this on Patreon too, as I lead into my next topic, that anything that I ever say or anything that anyone ever says, anyone, please do not take it as truth without filtering it through your own discernment, the discernment located in your heart, not in your body, not in your gut, not in your mind, certainly not in your mind. Filter it through your heart. And if it feels like the truth, it will clarify in you. There, there's a quality to the truth that feels so resonant. It feels like a beautiful crystal singing bowl and the note that it produces the note is never out of tune it is so clarifying and it brings you into a state of centeredness and alignment that's how the truth feels to me so if what i'm saying doesn't feel that way then please don't take it on and apply that to anyone and everything everything you're ever listening to anyone you're ever listening to you have access to the truth. You do not need a middleman. And we are all holding different pieces of the puzzle. So it is okay for us to engage with and listen to others when we feel guided. I'll also just put a little plug in here for the Understanding Entities Part 2 Masterclass that I just did last week. And it was really, really, really good. I am not afraid to say that. It was very informative. I'm not going to lie. I was very disappointed at how few people signed up for it because I just feel like this is information that people need. And you might say, well, Amy, if it's information that everybody needs, why did you make it like, why did you make it a paid masterclass? Why is it behind a paywall? Well, for two reasons. The first one being that I am the kind of person who has many times in my past and still will, because I'm still working through it, work myself to the bone and deplete myself completely, giving everything away. It is a mother archetype distortion. It's the mother martyr distortion. And I inherited it through my mother. And I have to be very cognizant of it. And I'm always working through it. It's a, it's a deep distortion in my field. And it played out a lot in the realm of romantic relationships for me for a long time before I trip figured it out and could see it, what it for what it, it was. But it was very much a case of like, you know, why buy the cow when she's given the milk away for free? And the milk wasn't just, you know, that I was having sex with them. It was like, I would make them homemade soup when they were sick. I would drive to see them if we were long distance. I would be infinitely patient, infinitely giving. I would give, 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 give. And, you know, they were just happy to take. As long as I was giving it, they were happy to take. And I really depleted myself. So there's that reason. And then the second reason that this important information about dark entities but I didn't give away for free and I made it a paid masterclass that you get lifetime access to. Very reasonably priced. 
accessible on the freaking Patreon for $33. The reason for that is also because it's very important at this time that people self-select, that we make a powerful choice from where we are, that we are choosing to be open and receiving to certain information and energy. It's like we are choosing our path. We always are choosing our own adventure. But again, like I was saying about taking full responsibility for ourselves as powerful creator beings. It's like, sure, I could just put it up on YouTube. There are a million frigging free resources about trauma transmutation, shadow work, dark entities, all that stuff on YouTube. And some people watch it and some people don't. And if they watch it, do they apply it? There's something different about self-selecting and choosing to receive information and like giving an energy exchange that gives you kind of like an ownership over your own experience of, with it. So anyway, the live part of it is done, but you can still access it. It's still on my Patreon at the $33 a month level or if you want to get the two-for-one deal where you get Understanding Entities Part 1 and Understanding Entities Part 2. It's available on my website, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, there's a link for it for $77. So, that. Okay. Okay. So what I want to talk about now is the new age false light deception. It feels more important than ever that people receive this information. So the new age false light deception is a false, dead, astral light that is presented as the light that is meant to hypnotize people, lull them, trap them, and turn them off course. The false light reminds me of that creepy deep sea fish in Finding Nemo in the scene where Marlin and Dory are swimming down to find the mask that has like whatever it is like 42 Wallaby Way or I don't know whatever the address was and it falls down into the ocean depths and they have to swim down in the the crevice to find it and they're down there and they can't see anything it's so dark it's so far away from the sunlight and then all of a sudden they see this light and they're like what's that it's pretty. And they got, both get kind of lulled into this, like, oh, this trance kind of space. And then, you know, we can see that the light is a lure attached to this horrible, hideous, <laughs> deep sea fish that intends to eat them. So, the creepy deep sea fish in Finding Nemo reminds me of the false light deception. Behind this light is the jaws of the beast. But <laughs> inside the jaws of the beast is not necessarily like hellfire and brimstone and eternal torture. It is like an an entropy infinite entropy infinite static of infinite nothingness i actually had i was getting visions of this a while ago and i couldn't really decipher it until very recently but it was after a couple times that i heard others talking about the false light and i was getting these connections to infinity but they were like two different connections one was like the infinite god source and then the other i didn't know it wasn't the infinite god source but it was just infinity and it was like like i said like that static it was just entropy it was just infinite nothingness and 
that infinite nothingness felt so awful to my psyche. And I thought it was God. I was like, this is what God feels like. Whoa, I think I don't want to. And then I realized like, oh no, that is, that is the, the space that they actually want to take us. They don't need to take us into eternal hell, fire and brimstone damnation. That is what's happening here. They want to take us into a place where you become so fragmented. We become so fragmented that we're like dust, just nothingness. Anyway, I want to give the personal disclaimer here that, like I said, following my last segment, the warning about Halloween, like I said, please, as with anyone, Use your discernment with everything that I say. You do not have to agree with me. All I'm doing is presenting things as I understand them. I'm not asking you to change your life based on what I say if it does not feel true or in alignment to you. Your truth is sacrosanct. Your truth lives in your heart. Also, I am not above the New Age false light deception. I have totally fallen for it. Yeah. I just, I've, I've been on a journey of seeing it with greater and greater clarity. And I'm not going to name names here at this time on the podcast, but I am going to record a, a Patreon bonus about the New Age False Light Deception using examples, naming names. But it's not going to be in a bashing way. Like, it's not my intention to be like, oh, I'm a true channel and others are deceivers. I do believe that there are others that are intentionally deceptive. I believe that there are others who are high, who have become hijacked. And I believe that there are just a whole bunch of people that are under the spell of the false light and they're just creating content. But the reason that I would use names and examples is because it's helpful to make that connection. But I'm not going to do it on the podcast. Anyway, that's my personal disclaimer. I am not above this. I'm not somehow like magically immune to this. And I also am not asking you to not use your discernment with what I'm saying. Always use your discernment with everyone. So the New Age falls light deception. It plays out in several ways as I currently see it. The first one and the most obvious to most of us, again, acknowledging that many, many, many people in my community are truthers. And so we will be able to see this part. It is the denial of the darkness and spiritual bypassing. So the denial of the darkness is like obviously problematic. And I say this even as I, you know, still am cringing right now inwardly that I am recording this to broadcast to thousands of listeners. It's hard to talk about the darkness. Don't want to put fear in anybody's heart, but it is not of service to not talk about the darkness and not acknowledge it. So we do have to acknowledge the darkness. Everything doesn't get to be warm and fuzzy, love and light. Because that's not a reflection of the truth. And it distracts us from what we're actually capable of doing from our creatorship. If you deny any aspect of yourself, then you are leaving. It's like, it's like the saying of you're leaving money on the table, but it's not necessarily money. It's like you're leaving power on the table. Your power. Yours. Yours. The darkness is real and it's a complicated topic. And again, I'm plugging my Understanding Entities Masterclass. Another way that it plays out is through New Age gurus and the victim, savior, fallen archetypes. So the New Age guru and victim, savior, fallen archetypes are like, you know, I think we all know, again, I'm not going to name names on the podcast. 
check me out on Patreon. But we can see examples of new age internet, you know, like I'll, I'll call them celebrities, but they're not like Hollywood celebrities. They are, they just have large, large followings. And honestly, some of them don't have large followings too. It doesn't, they don't have to have huge ones, but definitely if somebody has a huge following, it's, it's sort of an indicator. I'm not saying, you know, that they're terrible and they are bad people and you should never listen to them. Just, it's like a red flag to indicate, like, be on extra alert. Use your discernment. Use your discernment. So these, the new age, the new age gurus, they use kind of like an astral glamour that makes them extra magnetizing, kind of like that, you know, creepy light with the creepy deep sea fish. And they, they don't necessarily do it through physical beauty or makeup or expensive sets or anything like that. It's more like the, they cast a spell and it's often very, very subtle from a place of unintegrated spiritual ego of really like, it's a, there's a part of them that wants to be worshipped, wants to be followed, wants to be heard. And, and again, I'm going to offer a personal disclaimer that like, I'm aware that I have an audience. I I could be one of these people. I don't believe that I am. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be talking about it. But again, this is why you need to use your <clears throat> your discernment because I have had unintegrated ego aspects where like I deeply have wanted to be seen after, you know, a lifetime of feeling in my younger years and the majority of my life, like my parents didn't really see me. People didn't really see me. People didn't really see or honor the wisdom that I was bringing all that stuff right that meant that like I'm still working through these things I've inherited shit just like everyone else has and those programs those I'll call it a trauma it's a micro trauma but those micro traumas are super subtle and they require a lot of vigilance and so like I undoubtedly have come from unintegrated ego as well Okay, so I'm not, I'm not trying to throw shade at people. I'm just wanting to alert you to the things to notice as you're using your discernment. So new age gurus cast an astral glamour that make them especially magnetizing and attractive. And yet, like, why? For what? What are you getting out of listening to them? Are you receiving like a ton of activations that expand your consciousness and propel your ascension or are you just listening to them so that you can like I don't know like feel like you're awake when you're actually not they use they often not always but they can often use jargon meaning languaging that is specific to kind of the the niche that they're working in the new age niche that is unclear or deceptive. It's like a confusing form of communication so that people kind of get what they're saying, but also feel like it creates this glamour, again, an astral glamour of like, oh, this person's an authority. Oh, they're using like, you know, like words and whatever. And again, the words aren't the issue. It's more sensing the energy and the intention, even if it's an unconscious, unintegrated ego intention behind the use of those words, behind the way that the person presents themselves. It's just sort of creates a separation that gives the impression that this person is like special and they have more intel than anyone else. And that, and then often they will claim a specialness. And sometimes they, they, they're not necessarily outrightly saying like, I am divinely ordained to blah, 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 blah. Because that's a little overt. I'm sure some do. But the, 
the, the way that the specialness is claimed is in the description of psychic experiences or channeling experiences that sound so impressive that it makes the listeners feel dissatisfied with their own experiences. And that's one of the reasons that I spent so long in my life wishing that I was psychic, not realizing that I was literally actively psychic at the time that I was wishing that I was psychic. Because I would hear people talking about their psychic experiences and and trying to describe them. And again, I'm not saying that they were being deliberately deceptive. But the way that they described them gave an impression that, oh, like, I don't know, like, light beings literally walked into your room. And again, I'm also not saying that that's not the truth of what somebody experienced. But it's just like, we have to be cognizant of the way that people frame things. And if if it's creating within us a sense of greater distance from our own ability to have those connection experiences. And I'll also acknowledge that this one is particularly sticky because the English language is not structured for us to be able to talk about these things with clarity. So, which is why I'm always forever complaining about the limitations of English, even though so many people message me and are like, you're so articulate, you articulate things so well. And I feel like, if you only understood what I actually see and understand, no, <clears throat> you would also feel how I, I, like everything I'm saying is falling flat, but I'm doing my best. So, so again, I'm not suggesting that everybody in the new age is deceptive intentionally or even unintentionally what i am saying is the new age is laced with a deceptive note that is utilized by dark parasitic forces to deceive us <laughs> to hypnotize us lull us trap us and turn our gaze away from our own ascension and the connection that we inherently have with God's source creator. Anyway, so, so the, the description of psychic things, if it's making you feel like you can never have this experience and it's bringing you into comparisonitis where you're disappointed with your own self, that is an indication of you being pulled in the direction of the deception hijackery, not necessarily by the person using the words, but by a darker consciousness field that wants you to feel separate. The New Age guru and victim savior fallen archetypes also plays out through the creation of psychic dependence and psychic addiction. So this can be a dependence on using tarot cards or oracle cards or pendulums or any other form of divination, astrology, anything that you feel like you need that in order to make decisions, particularly make decisions. And I say this again, like, I obviously do monthly and weekly energy reports, and I do them using two forms of divination, tarot cards and the Akashic Records. So in my opinion, the tarot cards themselves are not, like, they are neutral. They are, they are not deceptive. They are a beautiful way of understanding the archetypal energies that <sighs> tend to characterize human life on Earth. So using them to interpret and understand energy is not a deception. But if you need them to interpret and understand energy, it's kind of like you don't really need that middleman. I don't need the middleman. I just really like 
using my tarot cards, it they're beautiful. They, I'm a manifesting generator in human design, so my strategy is to respond. They give me something to respond to, so I'm not just rambling all over the place. But if, like, in the past, I was addicted to using my oracle cards, and I would do a ton of readings, and eventually, I swear to God, it was my higher self, possibly my guide, I don't know, but they just stopped working. And I know it was because I was using them obsessively in an, in an addictive way where I was giving away way too much of my power to the, you know, the messages from the Oracle cards. That was a long, long, long time ago before Francis, my soon to be 18 year old was even born. So it was a long time ago. But anyway, we can also depend, create psychic dependence on obviously like psychic sessions, which PS is one of the reasons that I price my sessions so high because this is not the ideal gatekeeper. I mean, people can spend a lot of money on a single session and I know it's a huge risk and I know it's a lot of money and it's way out of the price range for some people. And I imagine some people are fucking pissed and think that I'm an asshole for pricing my session so high. And like, I get it because I have had those thoughts about other readers in my past too. What I understand from being on this side of readings is number one, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to blend my field with somebody else's Akashic field. And then like number two, my time is so precious. And so if you want, everybody's time is precious, not just mine, but like, you know, I'm the creator of my own reality stream. So my time is very precious. And if somebody else wants to be in my like undivided attention where I am going into their Akashic field and retrieving information, I need to be well compensated for it in order to actually bring that information through. But also number three, like I don't want people coming back for repeated sessions. I would rather, not saying that there's no value in it, there's a ton of value. I also don't love doing one-off sessions because I feel like, I don't know, kind of feels like one night stands. As a Scorpio, personally, I'm a serial monogamist. Like, I just don't have any of that Gemini energy in me that is like a butterfly or a, a bee that loves to visit many flowers. I like, I want to go deep with, I, I just do. I love people. I, there's so much depth to their souls. And so I, I feel like one off sessions, often I come away and I think about you for months afterwards, months, despite myself, wonder was like, did that information land? Is that changing their lives? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, was it a good session? All that stuff. Do they feel good about choosing that session? But also, it feels like a one night stand because I'm like, oh, there's so much more there to be uncovered. So that's why I love mentorship because then we can, you know, develop a relationship and like explore all the beautiful intricacies of your own Akashic field. But I used to do readings at $77. <laughs> that, oh, that actually made me like, I actually got sick from doing it because, because it's so hard. But also I realized like, first of all, people bring the most disempowered questions to their readings when they don't have to pay a lot of money. And just questions where I'm like, that is what you want to know from the Akashic field. And I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm just saying that, like, you don't need me to answer that. You've got this. You've got this. You don't need me for that. And I also saw that then sometimes people would rebook multiple times and they just like, they would just want more and more and more. And it's like, I can see a pattern of dependence and kind of addiction being cultivated. There are also, in the New Age, false light deception. So I mentioned the denial of darkness and spiritual bypassing. The New Age gurus and victim savior fallen archetypes. There's also astral deceptor clones of false archangels, ascended masters, guides, benevolent ETs, etc., that feed us sweet opioid information that lulls us into a calm, complacent trance of inaction. 
It lulls us into a pleasant, sleep-like trance dreamscape where we think that we are awake, but we're actually asleep. It kind of reminds me of the character Nell Crane in The Haunting of Hill House, in that god-awful scene where she goes back to the house and, like, in her mind, the false light is, like, reuniting her with her beloved husband that passed away. And, like, she's dancing with him again. She's in a beautiful dress. And then you get, like, flashes to, like, her actually dancing in this horrible, abandoned, decrepit house. And then, like, she gets reunited with the specter of her mother. And, like, oh, anyway. Ugh. It kind of reminds me of that. I'm not saying it's going to lead us all to hang ourselves, but more like the these astral deceptor clones lull us into a trance where we think that we're actually awake and we're ascending and we're just in, yeah, like a, 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 a trance-like state. These false archangels, ascended masters, guides, benevolent ETs, ghosts, all, all these things, not really ghosts. I mean, these are all things, the things to take note of are the ones that feed us this sweet opioid information, like love and light and whatever. Again, like use your discernment with everything that I'm saying. I'm not, I believe that I am connected to the actual Akashic field. I can sense when other people say that they are connected to the Akashic field and they're not. But I also, this is a process for me to, to become ever increasingly aware of the subtleties and the nuances of the deception. So these false archangels, ascended of masters, guides, benevolent ETs, etc., are from a field that is parasitic and siphons off of you. And they act as an intermediary between yourself and the divine God source that is outside of you. They aren't necessarily trying to, as I said, lure you like, like in the Haunting of Hill House. They're not trying to lure you into committing suicide necessarily. Maybe, but probably not. I think that their, their intention is to lure you into that inactive state of almost being like, Like in that that entropy I was describing, like in that like fragmented state. I don't know. It's like you just get trapped in the astral realm. You think you're connected with like Archangel Michael and it's actually a deceptor. You think that you're connected with like an ascended master and it's actually not that ascended master consciousness field. It just tells you that's what it is. It just shows up and we are not, we're not taught to use our discernment. So we just take it at face value. We're like, okay, oh, I guess I was contacted by Archangel Michael. Or like, oh, I guess I was contacted by, there are many false Jesuses that come to people. Many, 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 many false Kuan Yin's, many false Mother Mary's. Like people will just have somebody show up and be like, I'm your guide. And then they're like, okay. And because they don't do anything harmful to them, they think it must be true. But really what they're doing is they're distracting you away from the direction that you actually need to go. Same with, you know, ETs, especially in the conversation around starseeds. There can be an implication. And P.S., I'm totally positive that I have inadvertently contributed to this. And I apologize deeply for that. Again, I am not perfect. But in these conversations around star seeds, we can make the assumption that all star seeds are, we're like all ETs are good. Or like if somebody shows up and they're like, I'm Pleiadian, you're like, oh, great. All the Pleiadians are good. And like that might, that consciousness might not even be Pleiadian. It's just saying that they are Pleiadian. And then, you know, I'm aware that listening to this can make you feel like, well, then who do I trust and nothing? And some people go directly, like at this point, they're like, trust nothing and no one, only Jesus Christ. And I mean, I'll talk more about that on the Patreon bonus, but I think it's also important to use our deception when we're going to that extreme as well. Oh my God, use our discernment. I said use our deception. Use our discernment 
where we're going to that extreme as well. And so one of the ways that we can sort of like use our discernment and verify these beings of these consciousness entities that are presenting themselves as things like angels, archangels, ascended masters, guides, benevolent ETs, etc. Or our deceased loved ones. They don't necessarily have to be ghosts, but our past loved ones. Is to filter it through, first of all, our heart. I'm going to keep coming back to that because it is, that is, that's it. That's as simple as it is. Filter it through your heart. But also filter it through the question of like, <sighs> there's so many ways to put it. I, my personal invocation prayer that I created for myself, if you've taken into the Akasha or if you're in 1212 or if you are in Sorceress, the answer you will have heard me use it many times and I will have created meditations using it. But my personal invocation, my personal prayer that I use before going into anyone's Akashic field runs my channel through many layers of benevolent consciousness, but first and foremost are like up and like the, the order that I do it, it's like in the top three is Christos and Sophia. Because to me, and I'll talk more about this soon, but the Christos Sophia consciousness represents the direct connection, like my internal direct connection to God, source, creator. And then I say of the, high, the highest angelic beings of the purest white light. So you can say, much like Chris Matthews did from of Forbidden Knowledge News, when he was sharing about his experience with his spirit guide Laird, who showed up, he said something like, are you a Christ and good? <laughs> and Laird laughed at him and was like, yes. But like that, like, if you filter it through the Christo Sophia consciousness, that field, that is a way because they they will either refuse to answer and then you know that they're not or they they can't like they're unable to claim that for for i think it's because of the proximity to god source anyway i don't want to get off track but if you don't really like using that you can also say are you of the highest light and service to the whole or are you of the highest light and service to unity consciousness like those those things work as well So all of this especially targets light workers, star seeds, indigos, and empaths. It is meant to prevent our full awakening and ascension. And they don't really need, as I said, to hijack us and become demonic entities that like, you know, seek to truly like possess our souls and take us down to hell. What they actually need to do is trap us in the astral realm by fooling us into thinking that we are awake when we're actually under a hypnotic trance and that we are not truly fulfilling our mission. And so we need to strike a balance between being like raw, ex raw, exposed empaths being like eaten alive by the horrors on earth. So we don't want to be at that extreme where you're just like, incapacitated by the empathic rawness of the suffering that takes place in this realm. But we also need to strike a balance between that and the self-absorption of the New Age world. So the New Age world really promotes like, I don't know, they, like, okay, again, none of these things, this is the difficulty in talking about it, because none of these things are inherently bad or wrong. It's just that they lend themselves to this deception. So there is a self-absorption in the New Age world that comes through things like manifestation. 
I talk about manifestation all the time. I just had a manifestation masterclass. I believe in it. I believe that we are supposed to experience a life of fulfillment. We are powerful creator beings. And, 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 as long as we are suspended on the meat hooks of the false matrix mainframe hijackery system, are manifesting in response to the predictive programming that is applied to us. So we might be manifesting things that actually are of no importance to us whatsoever because we think that's what we need to do in order to become successful or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, again, I love using movies as examples because most people understand, like, The Wolf of Wall Street. Like, there's a reason that money is that that we have bad programming around money and we all have like we're wary around money because money brings a lot of material gratification which in and of itself is not inherently wrong but if you have a lot of unintegrated shadow a lot of unintegrated trauma and therefore you have fragmented ego portions that are seeking to first of all they are probably hijacked by dark entities and then second of all they're seeking to like fill the void created by the lack of integration through kind of like compulsions and material pleasures and the or for some people it's like the rush of achievement the rush of success like it doesn't have to be like material objects like a fucking ferrari like it's not some people are car people and some people aren't and cars aren't inherently bad but the point is that if you are not in your full creatorship The things that you're manifesting are probably not actual reflections of your, like, the true blueprint creator being templating that we have. And so then we end up creating within the parameters of this, like, hijacked system that we live within. And then we kind of, like, feel super proud of ourselves and self-congratulatory. And again, I have done that (laughs) i am not above you or anyone or any of this i'm just at a place where i can see it with much more clarity to the point where i'm ready to talk about it so we want to strike a balance between being like super super like disabled almost or what's the word that i was thinking of incapacitated as empaths versus being kind of lulled into a place of like self-congratulatory self-absorption there is a balance to be had where we are we are witnessing we can see we are open we see we see we can witness the suffering we can love with compassion we can receive the things that we need in order to survive and thrive oh i'll give you an example of creating from a place of like true god source alignment versus manifesting from a place of ego so manifesting from a place of ego personal example very vulnerably sharing here so you can hear that i'm not trying to present myself as being magically above all this so for a while i was like you know looking at all the people who have online businesses, massively successful, whatever, whatever. And so I got kind of like distracted by like business growth and business success. And it only lasted a few months before I was like, what am I doing? Like, I don't even, I literally don't even care. And this is making me less happy legitimately. That was an ego-driven manifestation of self-absorption and service to myself. Recently, I got the download, the hit that, or like it was just, I don't know, it just received, it was just, I'm claircognizant, so I just, suddenly I just know things. That I need to play the harp. I need to get a harp. I need to play the harp. And it's really important. And it's because the sound frequencies that I'm creating through the harp 
are. Mm. This is probably going to sound super abstract, but I could see that I am I am conducting the stories. I am conducting a lot of the reality streams and the narratives, and like through my own reality stream and the reality streams that I influence directly and indirectly. And I just understood that if I get a harp and I play the harp, the sound frequencies that I produce through the harp, they they direct the narrative as it plays out, but without my conscious ego mind influencing it. And so when I was trying to manifest a certain level of business success, first of all, as I said, it was making me miserable. I was not enjoying what I was doing. And second of all, it wasn't even working. But then when like I had this vision about the harp, and I just like talked about it. I I mentioned on my Patreon in a bonus episode and then I, or an energy report, I think. And then I mentioned it to a couple other people. And then like, I found a harp and, and like a big harp. I'm not talking like a little mini folk harp. I'm talking like one of those big ass concert harps. And I found one and it was like effortless because it is a true creation. I don't know where it's going. I don't know how to play the harp. I've literally never played the harp, okay? It seems insane from, you know, whatever. Like if I was to tell my friends who are super not awake and super, super believe the narrative, they'd be like, what? And like, when are you going to have time? And they would just think I'm stupid. It seems insane, but it is a true creation. It is a true manifestation. And so it's working effortlessly because it's not being born out of my ego. Okay. So back to the new age, false light deception. The thing is that it preys on our lower chakra trauma. So it's keeping us ungrounded and unintegrated. Essentially, it's keeping us fragmented while distracting us with astral bliss of false love and light and astral fantasies like, you know, astral traveling and, you know, whatever, like, like the kind of like psychic things that also, also were the initial things that drew me into this whole world. And again, I'm not saying astral traveling is wrong or that you're wrong or you are being deceived if you're astral traveling. It preys on our heart trauma and it glorifies the third eye over the heart. Again, acknowledging that my podcast is called Third Eye Awakening, which was a guided thing, P.S., because I think <laughs> it's like the perfect title to draw a lot of people in. But it just, again, it claircognizantly came to me when I was, you know, dreaming up this podcast was, was like, it's called Third Eye Awakening. And I believe it was a divine guidance, not a distractor guidance. But the the New Age false light deception it preys on our heart trauma. So it kind of like down, it preys on it by downplaying our heart. Like we don't hear a lot about the importance of the heart and the power of the heart in the New Age. But we hear a lot about third eye experiences and like people want to open their third eye and have that kind of stuff like like somehow that is where the truth lives but the third eye is located within the skull and within deep within the brain which is governed by the mind and the mind is deeply hijacked so the third eye is not a bad thing the brain is not a bad thing and the mind is not a bad thing but Maybe you can see what I'm trying to illustrate that the deception is to prioritize that over the heart and at the same time injure the shit out of us in our heart chakras so that we don't even want to be in that space and we never realize that that is the center of our power. Our Christic God source power. And it preys on our desire to feel guidance to feel like you know we're getting led 
in a in a good direction, praise on our our sense of indecision and fear that we're going to make the wrong choice, and it praise on our desire to feel special. Pointing at myself for that one. That was like my 20s in a nutshell, wishing that I felt special. Other examples of the new age deception to be wary of is sacred geometry. So a lot of sacred geometry is hijacked geometry. This is one of the first ways that I really understood the the false light deception is when I saw a picture of the true flower of life, which is the lotus of eternal life, beside the bullshit flower of life that's depicted through, you know, new age mainstream pop culture, I immediately saw, I immediately understood, holy shit, air quotes, sacred geometry is, is totally hijacked. And if you happen to have a flower of life tattoo, like one of my friends messaged me and he was like panicking over it, Know that you are directly connected to God's source creator. And not only can you, like, not only can you choose to not be negatively influenced by this, but you can reclaim and rehabilitate and heal these geometries by choosing your own connection to God's source creator. And then a lot of geometry is not hijacked. For example, the triquetra is a very unhijacked, very powerful symbol. And yet we don't want to get distracted by worshiping the symbol or the geometry. Crystals are not bad things. I have a lot of crystals. Crystals are not bad things. They are not something that we need to get rid of. They're very powerful. I love my crystals. But again, it's sort of like when we outsource our power to the crystals as if we need this crystal for healing. We need this crystal for activations. We need this crystal to manifest this thing or to accelerate our psychic abilities or whatever, whatever, whatever. That's where the deception lives tarot, oracle cards, any any form of divination. Again, like I said, it's not in the cards themselves. It's the acknowledgement that first of all, they are portals to whoever, whoever the fuck entity wants to come through. So if you don't have a good practice to really make sure that you are connecting with true entities of the true light in service to unity consciousness and the whole God source creator, the crystals frequency, etc., then the tarot and the oracle cards and any other forms of divination, runes, pendulums, etc., can become tools for lower astral entities to essentially just fuck with you. The use of practices like automatic writing, channeling, developing any of our psychic abilities without, again, like knowing where your allegiances lie, I guess is a, it's, it's an overly dramatic way of putting it. It's not really the languaging that I want to use, but it's the, the languaging that comes to mind. It's like, where, where are your allegiances? Who are you connected to? What are you connected to? What are you representing? What are you here for? Why are you doing this? Are you doing it just to feel special? Because, you know, it's painful growing up in this world and not being seen and acknowledged for the powerful beings that we are. And so we have this big hole in ourselves that feels like, I just want to feel like I'm special. That is that is not a good place to develop these practices because dark entities come in, they're a match to those vibrations. They're a match to those consciousness frequencies. Whereas if you like cultivate first and foremost above everything else, your connection to God source creator as a divine child of God source creator. And like in your heart, all you desire is to be connected with that totality consciousness that 
is everything and to be of service to that and to do no harm and no wrong and only the highest good to all who are affected directly and in indirectly, like that's a good place to develop these abilities from. So automatic writing isn't inherently bad. Channeling isn't inherently bad, obviously, because I do it. It's just knowing, it's basically like <laughs> knowing yourself and your own the, the chinks you have in your armor, your own Achilles heels. So the false light feels to me like LED lights or fluorescent lights. It emits a cold, dead light. It is light, but it's cold. It is, is dead in, insofar as it, it's not a living, dynamic light. The true light of God's source creator feels like the warmth of the sun. It feels like living light, like it's white and it's rainbow, crystalline, diamond, plasmatic, kaleidoscoping, geometric, dynamic beauty. And it's so pure. It's There just aren't words for it. Or it feels like, you know, the, the, the false light feels like an electric fireplace versus an actual, like, a campfire in the background or the, the backyard or, or a candle or something. Like, there's just something so different about the quality of the light. And the final thing I want to say about it is, like, ultimately just keep growing. My past... And this whole journey took me through many, many, many false light deceptions. And I'm here. I feel like I am, you know, ever expanding, ever ascending, like direct connection to God's source creator. The path that I took through all those deceptions was the perfect path for me. And there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm not trying to instill fear in you at all. It's just like, don't stop. Don't let yourself be trapped by a false ceiling. Would I say that we get like lulled into a trance and trapped in the astral? It's like there, there's the lower astral, which is like, bleh, and then there's the mid astral, which is very similar to where we are now. And then there's the high astral, which feels like it's full of light, and yet it's not the true light. And so there is a ceiling that's often created by people who are hijacked, like false gurus or like some, some like practices or information sources where you can never get higher than a certain level and be wary of anyone or anything that presents itself as being, presents itself as being necessary for you as an intermediary step between yourself and God's source creator, because that is not true. So just keep growing and just keep going. Keep ascending, keep expanding your consciousness, keep being present with yourself, your whole self, uncovering the delicious, beautiful, exquisite mystery that you are. Keep going into your own scary places and seeing your shadow and alchemizing it, seeing your trauma and transmuting it, integrating all parts of yourself so that you are always coming into the moreness, the moreness of all that you are. And then Again, like, come back to the Christo Sophia consciousness and service to the whole. And I'll just say this too. Like, I've kind of been, you know, apologizing for myself for a few months now because it is an edge for me to talk and about the Christos, the Christ light frequency and use the term Christ. But I'm at a point where I'm so, like, it's just been such a, uh, it's, it is everything. And I'm, I'm asking you, I'm inviting you to get over your triggers around the term Christ because it has been specifically hijacked 
so that you turn away from it. The term Christ, in my view, has nothing to do with organized religion and its dictates or its tenets or its creeds or its dogma. The term Christ, Christos Sophia consciousness, is that is really about your direct connection to God's source creator as a divine child of God's source creator. That there is a divine masculine field and a divine feminine field of God's source creator and they come together in union and create a new consciousness field and that is the Christos Sophia field. It is the divine son and the divine daughter of God's source. And that is you. You are that. You need no intermediary. You need nobody to be your savior. You are saved. You are loved. You are received. You are forgiven before you even ask for it. You are provided for. But you must choose it and pride it and cultivate it. You must develop it and embody it. And it's not an overnight thing. Even if you have like a proverbial come to Jesus moment, and maybe you all know by now that I don't associate Jesus as the Christ. Those are two different things to me. But anyway, come to Jesus moment and you're like, oh, oh, like, oh, the clouds are parted and I understand and I'm in like the bliss of true oneness, unity with my creator and I am the creator, I am the creator, I am the created, I am it, it is me, it is all I am and it's not from an ego place, it's like oh, the most divine connection. Even then, that will wear off eventually and in when it wears off, it's for you to now embody it and integrate it into your entire being. It is the embodiment of 12th dimensional consciousness while incarnated in a human form. It is the dissolving of all of the membranes that separate the different dimensions of our own consciousness. It is the complete awareness of the illusions of this realm while being immersed in the illusion. And it involves no need to resist what is because the illusion itself isn't bad. It allows for so much expansion. It's seeing the perfection of this holographic realm. And it is alchemizing it from the inside out and from the outside in. It's holding a frequency so high and so pure and so clear a frequency of absolute grace and love that you create and become a healing field. Okay, so I knew that was going to be a, this was going to be a long one, a long one. If you're still with me, thank you. I love you. I hope that this served you. I truly do. And I want to remind you of the different ways that you can work with me if this information resonates with you and you want to go further. And again, this comes back to like, it is fucking time to make our choice where like, are we trying to hold on to the status quo and play into our disempowerment and victim narratives, our victim stories? Or are we choosing ourselves as powerful creators? I hope you are ready to choose yourself as a powerful creator. And if so, I have ways that you can do that alongside me. But there are many ways to do so. And as I just said about the false light deception, you do not need me as an intermediary. However, you might feel total resonance with me and feel extremely activated by the things that I share. And you know that your next growth and evolution and expansion in your ascension process is 
in walking alongside me for a period of time. And if that is the case, then you can join me in the Warrior of Light bundle, which is starting on Sunday. Oh my goodness. No, it's starting on Monday. Monday, October 17th, we are starting with a root chakra clearing. I'm going through every single chakra to clear them out, to talk about the different types of trauma I find in the chakras and to take you know everybody who has signed up through a clearing process to clear them out. And it's kind of like the important thing about doing this is that our chakras are, they are like receivers and transmitters of non-physical, aka psychic information. And we really cannot experience that psychic stuff with clarity and use really good clear discernment. We can't have that stuff activated within ourselves if our chakras are gunked up and full of trauma. It's kind of like, you know, like if your root chakra is a scene from Hoarders, and there is not like everything is like full floor to ceiling with just stuff. Then how can your root chakra receive and transmit psychic information? And believe me, it does. So from the 17th to the 23rd, we're going through all seven chakras and clearing them out. And that comes with my course, Magic in the Dark, which is about trauma transmutation and shadow alchemy. I also want to say like, Use this for yourself, please. I do all the time. But also feel free to use it if you are a healer or you just feel called to learn how to do this stuff with others. Please use it. And then from the week of November 1st to November 7th, we are going through all of the chakras to activate them. So it's kind of like after we've cleared everything out, then we're going to activate the actual abilities, the templating of those chakras to receive and transmit psychic information in the particular way that each of them is particularly coded to do. And that comes along with my course, the Psychic Activation Course, which is all about psychic activation. So so that is available to join and I'm really excited. I bundled these two together. You can sign up for them individually at their regular price, or you can buy the bundle at a beautiful discount. You get lifetime access. It's so much. It's a wealth of information, a wealth of information. And then otherwise, I have my highest level inner circle mystery school slash group mentorship program called 1212 which is about accessing, ascending into, and embodying the 12th dimensional consciousness, the Christosophia frequency, while we are incarnated in human form, and truly activating the soul mission at the avatar level of consciousness that we came to embody so that we can be on earth as powerful, powerful God's source creators. That is like, this is, ugh, I can't even, I don't even have words for 1212. It's, it is my favorite thing. We have been working on things like forgiveness and cord cutting, quantum space clearing, Akashic timeline clearing, Akashic like past life healing, telepathy, remote viewing, grid work, 17 dimensional chakra activation, heart portal opening, dissolving illusion, 12 dimensional DNA strand activation. We're, we're just, we're going all the way there and we do it together. And it's just been the most beautiful experience. I'm completely in love with everybody that is in it. And I would love to welcome you in it if you're ready for it. It also includes automatic access to every live program that I am running while you're in it. So it's like, it's truly just being in my inner circle and receiving all of the downloads that I'm getting like first. 
I know that it is for certain people. I can feel you out there and I would love to have you. So please message me if you want to talk about it. It also includes, I should say, a monthly Akashic session with me for personal guidance, like personal Akashic session. It's just the best and I adore it. So that's what I've got for you all. I love you. I hope this serves you. If you want to hear examples of the false light deception, then come on over to the Patreon. And if you want to hear, you know, the extended version of the explanation of the energy I feel coming up for Halloween, then also find that on the Patreon. Otherwise, have a beautiful day or night wherever you are, and I will catch you on the next episode. Oh my God, I almost forgot. <laughs> so important to say this. On Patreon, we're having a group hug call on Sunday, October 16th. I think it's at noon. Let me check. Hold on. Yes, it is at noon on October 16th, which is a Sunday, noon Eastern time. And this group hug call is going to be over Zoom. And I'm not teaching anything. It's like just an opportunity for us all to get together and have a conversation and for you all to like share, you know, whatever cool thoughts you have with me. Just share, be seen, make friends, be in community. I'm really excited about it. It's open to every Patreon subscriber. So come on over and join. The replay will be posted if you're not able to attend live. I can't wait to see you all. I hope a bunch of you decide to join just even to be on that alone. I would love to talk to you and meet you and be in your energy. I love you. Okay, really. Have a beautiful day or night wherever you are. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Hey, my beautiful friend. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Third Eye Awakening. If you like what you heard and you want to go deeper, then head over to my website, amybelair.com, and check out my store, which is full of my past programs, courses, modules, masterclasses, light codes, etc. that are powerful and they are potent and they pack a punch. Not going to lie. They are here to support you accelerate you and activate you in your spiritual awakening and psychic development journey and slash or if you want to stay in my most current vibey live energy then I suggest that you head over to the patreon and join me there at the lowest tier level which is only five dollars a month you get a secret bonus episode for every Third Eye Awakening episode that goes out. You also get a weekly energy report and light language activation, and you get a new moon and full moon emancipation transmission. So those are some fun ways to play, and I'll just remind you that I always have live programs going, so keep your eyes on my website, on my social media, and here on the podcast to find out what is the most current offering that I have. Either way, I love having you in my world and I hope that I get to meet you and work with you soon.